Hello guys, I have some Water Blast update news for you. Let's start. We have new story traits called Ancient Specimen. This story trait is mostly about fossils. If you play on the big Terra asteroid, you can find all the important fossils on your main planetoid. If you play on the smaller moonlets, you need to check out multiple planets. First look for the main fossil site, then you can click on it, at the moment it has this temporary art style. After finding it, you can start excavating it. You will need a duplicate with the master artwork skill for this. Once excavated, the new building will tell you where the other three important fossils are. You just have to click on them. There's the frozen fossil, the amber fossil and the petrified fossil. The frozen fossil looks like this. The amber fossil looks like this and is almost always placed in combination with a spore kit and the petrified fossil inside of magma with a pinch of pepper plant for some odd reason. Once you got your dupes inside, you can excavate them as well. Once the main fossils have been excavated, they each drop 4000 kilograms of fossil. Sorry Jean. And you will get a checkmark for the respectively named fossil. Since I did all three at the same time, I automatically fulfilled the requirements for this building to properly work now. Which is the main fossil site that you've seen before, but now it requires diamond to work. Each 10 kilogram of diamond will give you 100 kilogram of fossil. Also these tinier fossils here on the side will drop 2000 kilogram of fossil each. This is a pretty big reservoir of fossil. Just here are 6 tons of fossil and here are another 4 tons and another 2 tons here. 2 more tons down here. There's a new skill for the lovely dupes to learn. It is under the tidying skill tree and called pyrotechnics. Let's see if we have a head for that. We do, nice. The new pyrotechnic skill allows the dupe to use the blast shot maker, this building here. The blast shot maker needs 960 watts of power. It does use either aluminum, cobalt, copper or iron. The blast shot maker also needs petroleum to work. Each set of 5 kilograms of refined metal and 10 kilograms of petroleum results in one blast shot unit. The blast shot maker here to the left as well as the meter blaster with its temporary art style can be found far to the right of the research tech tree. As you can see you need almost the whole of plumbing, a lot of the gas pipes and interior decor. You will also need space research from the orbital data collection lab, at least in the DLC. But what can you actually do with the blast shots? Well you can take them and load them up in the meteor blaster. This building here with its temporary art style. Of course this is just a placeholder by clay. In this case we needed to supply at least 10 blast shots for the building to stop saying that it is lacking resources. The meteor blaster now has 10 blast shots. And as the name already gave away, this building can shoot down meteors. In this first test it used up 5 shots for 2 meteors, but this was a fluke. I tried it again with every single meteor and it only used 1 shot per meteor. If the meteors have a great enough distance, this building can even shoot down multiple ones. But clearly not all of them. Ice and iron meteors can now appear on the regular asteroid. I had to spawn these in because I couldn't get a natural occurring one. In addition to all the meteor shenanigans we also have a new trait called rock pan. I got it for all of our three duplicates here. They gain attribute bonuses during meteor showers. Which brings us to the meteors themselves. The iron one and the ice one are new. Then we have a whole bunch of other meteors where I'm not sure if we had them in the first place or if they are new. So here's a quick overview. The regular rock meteor, copper and gold meteors that give you copper ore and gold amalgam respectively. Fullerene which gives you surprise fullerene, dust meteor for CO2 and phosphoric meteor for phosphoride, algae meteor for algae, dust fluff for regolith but this time in debris form, uranium for uranium ore, a meteor <laughs> for a moo dragging a natural gas cloud behind them. The ice meteor also drags a little bit of oxygen behind it. The snow meteor gives you snow, slime meteor slime, the snack bomb meteor is sandbox only, the defunct satellite is a crashing satellite that also gives you aluminum and the last one the radioactive meteor which is quite small and produces liquid nuclear waste and corium as well as germs.
a lot and a lot of nuclear fallout and radioactive contaminants. Yep, nuclear fallout, highly radioactive, as well as the germs they produce. One of the new update notes also states that you can now see meteor showers in the star map. You can identify them with a telescope. I couldn't see one in my testing though, even though I had it set to apocalyptic settings. Apocalyptic settings, what do you mean I hear you say? Well, take a look at the planet settings screen. We do now have everything from clear skies up to doomsday as a meteor frequency selection option. And I said apocalyptic because it reads an onslaught of apocalyptic hailstorms that feels almost personal. This brings us back to the point that you can theoretically see the meteor showers coming in the star map if you use the telescope. Just a tip for you, don't have two different duplicates, use two different telescopes. Your game will crash. The meteor detection option in the telescope can be selected here. There now is an icon in the top left that turns into a button if you can get a new blueprint. That is what the new skins are called. Oh, it seems that I unlocked a new blueprint because I pressed on the tiny little icon here to the top left. Nice. Not sure why I got this. I have read that it is depending on your playtime. Probably not the past playtime, otherwise I would get a lot of stuff. <laughs> I guess the playtime from now on. One of the changes and improvements they made to all versions is that I added notifications to the main menu and the supply locker. In this case the supply closet and it shows you a symbol that you can claim your blueprints. Ooh, another one. Yes, awesome. Nice. I like that they fixed the bug where the graphics weren't shown correctly when the dupes are sleeping. They also fixed the drywall edges not lining up perfectly after the last update. Now they should line up pixel perfect. They fixed the issue where some duplicate actions were visible from other planetoids even over the border like cleaning up stuff or sometimes even some symbols and critters walking around. Since they fixed it I can't really show it. Rockets will now be shown in the unbuildable zone instead of just being cut off in the red area here. They fixed the duplicate exiting a trailblazer lander wearing a suit not displaying correctly. They made a few optimizations and reduced the memory usage when loading animations when the game starts or reduced memory usage of animation data. This was the dev mode speed and it was reasonably smooth. They fixed the bounding box of the dream journal being larger than the artwork. If you want to support me with these videos just leave a like. And if you like to see me try to survive with 100 duplicates at start trying to reach the 100th cycle check out this video here on the screen. Love you guys and Luma out.